Hi, today we're going to install a 150mm AV into a tank wall that hasn't been put in before. So our components, we've got the AV, your base plate, one rubber mat, one steel flange, one vortex uh, coupling that's on the outside, your hard stand, one coupling, one flat rubber, two corrugated rubbers, eight bolts, eight nuts, and 16 washers. Now, if you can, try and remember to keep these dry at all times, because when we go to install it, we're gonna use silicon, and we don't want it wet, because silicon doesn't really work when it's wet. Okay, so what tools we'll need today is we'll need a magnet to clean up your swarf, silicon, one cork gun, tape measure, larger drill bit, small drill bit for your pilot hole, one step drill, one marker, one file, one knife, one adjustable wrench, one ring spanner which is at least one three sixteenths in size, one hammer, a nibbler and one drill. We're going to mark our wall in the tank. So we're going to measure from the bottom. We're going to measure up 15 inches to the center. And then we're going to get one of our corrugated rubbers. Now this can only really go one way. If, you, if we go this way here, you're going to be too low to our mark. So you gotta find your spot and then basically find out where your center is. So this is basically your center, which is gonna be in between your two holes here. So now what we need to do is get your marker. Now you gotta be careful once you mark this, you don't really move it too far, but you wanna get a long little marker and you actually wanna Put a round circle in each one of these here again just be careful because this can slide pretty easy So mark out all your holes, then mark out your inside diameter. So when you take it off, you're basically going to know where you're going to drill. Now this is, um, we're doing this without the liner installed at all. There is another way um, of, of doing it once the liner installed. If you're going to be drilling from the outside and the liner is in already, you need to move the liner away and pull back the geotextile so none of the swarf gets on there. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to get some little pilot holes and we're going to find the centre. We're just going to drill through just the centre of any, all of these. Now we're just going to use the big one just to make these a little bit bigger. Be careful not to drill too hard because sometimes it can pull straight through and rip.
Right, so now we're going to use our step drill. Um, just need one of our bolts. Just want to make sure that we don't go too big, but there's a couple of stages here. So where your round circle is, that's roughly where your hole is here. So I'm just going to drill it out a little bit, just up to that line for now. Um, and also what you want to do is, because the bolts go through like this, you don't want to be drilling downwards because you need to basically make sure they go sideways. If you drill downwards, your bolts are going to end up like this as well. So you need to drill square. So just, just go slowly. Just don't go past your line there yet. Just go through all of them. Just go slow. Before I go any further, what you need to do is you need to grab your rubber and then just place it back on there so you can see how it'll only go one way, okay, the rubber. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look at my holes just to make sure that I'm actually in line um, with my holes. So sometimes when you do drill, it might go up here a little bit. So when you want to drill, you want to drill downwards. So I'm going to basically just use this one in here a little bit and I'm just going to press down a little bit while I drill and then that way I can get my hole a little bit lower. So what you want to do then is just make sure that all your holes are basically in line so I know this one's good. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drill that out a little bit bigger. Just took my next hole, I'm going to check it again. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm just going to drill it a little bit bigger so we can get our bolt through. So you only want to be just, just big enough to get your bolt in. So now that I've got that one okay, that looks all in line and it's all good. I'm just going to check my other ones. You can see with this one here, you can just see in here how I've got to go up a little bit with this one. So I'm just going to go with this one, I'm just going to same again, I'm just going to put it in slightly a little bit and then put it out the bottom line. And then that way I know when I drill it's going to be basically in line again. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, that looks good. So now I'm going to drill this one out. So you keep doing that process, just make sure that they're all going to be good. Have a look at all your bolt holes, make sure that they're all good. This one here I need to bring down this way just slightly. So just go through and make sure all your bolts can go in. So 
if if you drill downwards your bolt will end up like that so you got to make sure you're drilling square and then your bolt should all sit out 90 degrees to your tank okay you don't overly want to drill this too big so now that we've got that i'm just going to drill this one out now this one i'm going to drill bigger because i need to be able to get my nibbler in here to be able to cut it out okay so that's good once I've done that I'm just going to clean up have to get on the inside later and clean up make sure that I've got no dags behind here I can do that afterwards and now with the nibbler um, little tricky tool to use you've got to be really careful because what can happen is if you don't have control of it and don't be careful you can actually just run off that line really easy because the, the tool actually goes in front of you. So it's pretty important that you need to be pretty steady with this. Um, so I'm going to start now. So I'm just going to go from here. Now because I need to go that side, I'm going to stop the machine and then move over. If you leave the machine there while it's still going, that's just going to jump and you can cut right through there. So you've got to be careful. So now I'm going to go this side, just so I've got control of it. I'm going to stop again. I'm going to come back this side. And that's one one hole. So you might just have to clean up just a So now I've got my magnet, so you can see all your swarf here. So I'm just going to go through and just pick up all my swarf. The customers don't really like it if you leave too much around, because if they've got a dog or a little child walking around bare feet or something like that, they mightn't like uh, bits of metal getting stuck at their foot. 
So as we can see, it's all, all up there. So this will just go on the bin. Yep. Okay, we've filed out the outside. As you can still see, we've still got swarf here on the inside that we need to clean up. So we need to get rid of all of this. Okay, so we just going to go through. Just clean Just run your fingers over there, be careful not to cut yourself, but you can feel if there's anything left. So I'm pretty happy with that, except for that one. <laughs> okay, once I've done that, I'm going to grab my magnet again. Just clean up all your swarf inside here. Okay, now that we've actually drilled this, um, obviously we'll do this before we put the liner in, the geotextile and everything. Now that once we've done that and we're ready to put that in, what I want to do is just make sure on the ground here that it's, it, it's actually nice and flat because you're going to have that flat plate sit here. So you just want to make sure that there's nothing really sharp here, just so it's, it's actually quite nice and sitting flat. Um, we do use a rubber as well sort of thing, but it just helps a little bit. And then what we're going to do, um, we'll put down our geotextile. So we're just going to roll this one here out. And this is why you do all your drilling. If you drill with this here, all the swarf gets stuck to here and you can't get it off. So you're always better off pulling this back if the line is already in. Or if it's not already in, always drill your hole. And then you can put your geotextile back up. And then we're ready for the liner. With this here sometimes these can be a little bit sharp always lay it on the rubber mat until I'm ready for it right so we've got our hole cut 
We've got our geotextile down, we've got our liner hung, and now it's ready to cut the outlet and the hole in the liner for your fitting. So I would have someone on the outside telling me where the hole is. So they, they poke their finger through the hole, All right, here it is, okay. So basically, I've just got to find it myself. So here we are here. You need to make sure you've got a little bit of play underneath here a little bit. So I'm just going to go like that. So we're going to use a long, long knife so that when we cut the hole, we want to use, cut it here. So you've got no way of that knife coming out and, and stabbing somewhere else. So you want to do it that way. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to put my feet right in the corner. I'm going to find my circumference hole, which they showed me. And you want to cut this out pretty carefully. So we're going to start here. We're just going to follow that around. You'll fill the panel. So same again, make sure you're nice all the way in, because that way if you're using a little knife again, you can come out like this and all of a sudden stab somewhere that you don't want to. So cut out your whole hole. Be careful that your liner doesn't move. Okay, so now once we've got that cut, be careful where you put your, your knife, not really onto your liner. Now we, what, we, what we want to do is we want to grab our corrugated rubber. Now that's got to fit in behind here. So what I'm going to do, just make sure it's all clean. Sometimes they get a bit dusty. Clean out your holes here because they get a little bit dusty. Just clean it up. And again, you want to keep these dry. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to fold it up like that and I'm going to slip it in behind here. Now this will fit only one way where these holes are, so keep turning it around until all your holes match up. Okay, so you see how your holes are matching up here. So you want to put that in, into position. I'm just going to hold it with my foot for the moment so it doesn't fall down. I'm just going to grab a little bit of yellow tape and I'm just going to, to basically just use this to hold the rubber in position for me at the moment. Okay, now once I've got that stuck and all my holes are in line, what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to put that back in line with that one there. So same again, a little bit tricky, you've got to actually make sure that this liner doesn't move and the fitting doesn't move. So now I'm going to get my knife again, I'm going to just feel around for where the holes are. So I've got one hole here. And then I'll feel around, I've got another hole here. So feel around where your holes are. So you can see in the liner how I can, you can see. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my knife again now. You wanna hold that so it can't move. So I'm just gonna put my knife in here and cut a nice round hole. Same again, leave your knife all the way in. You don't wanna be going like this because all of a sudden that can come out and all of a sudden jab you here or put a hole somewhere where you don't. So all the way in. Be careful of your fingers not to cut yourself. And then you want to cut a nice clean hole. Go to your next one.
make sure you take these out. You don't want them stuck behind. The other thing you can do is once you've cut out a couple of holes, the person on the outside can put their finger in like this and actually hold the liner for you and also the rubber. Again, you don't want this to move. It's got to stay stationary because if you move it, your holes are going to be in a different spot and they're not going to get a 100% good seal on your rubber. So you want to stay where you are feel for your hole again Okay, so there we have all our holes cut. And now we're ready to basically put in our vortex. Now that my hole's cut, I'll have the bolts. 16 washers. The adjustable wrench. The hammer silicon and the cork gun. Okay, so I've got my flat rubber. Let's clean that up. I'm going to place this one up over here. Just line up your holes. This way we're going to take off. Now be, be careful on this, just before you put it on the liner, just check that to make sure there's nothing sharp on there. Sometimes there is, but that's okay. So I'm just going to take that off. We need to take off our nuts. I can place this one back on the mat. Now we're just going to basically line up these four rods with their four holes. Now you'll need to adjust this later on, so don't worry about tightening them up or anything like that yet. Always use your mat. Drag this up over here a little bit. So before we do this, um, just with the washers, the washers like got a rounded edge type of thing and it seems to be really flat this side. You want the rounded edge up against the bolt here, okay? So just line up your rubber. I'm just going to put two through for now, one either side. And then I'm going to pass this through the wall, just slowly. And I want to make sure that I'm going to get these two through here first. See, I'll go up onto this one a bit easier. You just want to make sure that one's going to go in there. And then just line up your other one. Uh, 
Um, so now that we've got these two through, we're just going to need to put some silicon around these bolts here. So just get right around that bolt. Doesn't matter, so long as you put plenty around there. Just push them up. Okay, now that I've done those two, I'll hop outside and I'll put those nuts and the flange on. Through, we're going to put our corrugated rubber on. Just clean it up a little bit. Now, it'll only fit one way, so find your spot where you are on your tank. So you can see that that's pretty well where it's going to sit. If it's wrong, it's not going to sit in line with with the actual fitting so it can only go one way okay so now that we know that it's got to go on that way we'll just put them over the bolts this one doesn't matter what way it goes we're just going to line those two bolts up again Okay, put your washers on. Same again, there's a rounded edge and a flat edge. Flat edge can go up against the fitting. A couple of nuts on. This is just going to help getting all the other bolts in, uh, being a little bit more in line. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get back on the inside, I'm going to put the rest of my bolts in and I'm going to put silicon behind the washer again like I did in the first step. We're just going to Now you don't want to go all the way in, you want to make sure you can get some silicon behind there first. I'm just looking to make sure that all my holes and the liner looks all good in there before I get the bolts in. Okay, this is where you hammer. Now just be careful that you don't miss your bolt, you don't want to be hitting the hitting the liner. So I'm just gonna hit him in a little bit. Come back and do all my silicon again. Just as long as you get around there. We'll come back and do a little bit more later.
Now the reason why we use silicon, if we don't seal around here, what can happen is that the water can actually travel down past between the bolt head and the washer, and then travel down through the bolt and then come out on the thread on the outside. So we need to seal this off so that that doesn't happen. So um, if you use too much silicon, it doesn't matter. And then we're just gonna basically get on this. Now I'm not going to worry about any more silicon, I'm going to go back on the outside and put all my nuts on. Okay, now that I've got all my nuts on, I'm just gonna go around and nip it up. Um, so I'm gonna use my one 3 16th ring spanner. The best spanner, to it, it's a good spanner. Um, what we wanna do though is not tighten it this way. We actually wanna go opposite like you would on a, on a car rim. So I'm just gonna go, just nip it up a little bit. Now this, you, you might need two people, one person on the inside holding it because as you tighten it up, the bolt might may spin on the inside, so uh, it's usually a two-person job, this one. Um, you can use a, a, a socket uh, with your impact drive if you've got a big enough socket as well. Um, but what you do is you would just go around and nip it up though, but you would still use this one here to fully tighten it. Um, you won't get enough strength in the the rattle gun to actually tighten them up. So you just want to just nip them up a little bit. Now what you'll find also is once you start tightening it, you'll tighten this one here, you'll tighten the next one and all of a sudden this one down here will be loose. So you need to go around a few times just to make sure that they're all tensioned up nicely. Be mindful of your fingers in here that you don't put your fingers in between because it does hurt. So now that I've got them nipped up, I'll have someone on the inside holding it. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through and just and tighten them up myself a little bit. So I'm just going to make sure I go through.
Now once I've gone around like that a couple of times, I'll then just go around just to make sure that they're all tight. Okay, now they're all tight. Okay, now they're all tight. Line is in position. We've got a little bit of play underneath here because as it fills up, it's going to fill up the corrugation. Um, we've got silicon around the bolts, which we're going to do a little bit more. We've got our plate here. Now we can see how we've got a little bit of movement there like that. If it's not sitting on the floor, you just place, you just want to put your foot on it a little bit under, do up your bottom one. And just make sure they're all up there. And you can see it's a bit, bit harder now. I'm just going to just snip these up. Now it won't always be this high, depending on how your ground is. If the ground's level, it should be about this high, but if it's up a bit, you'll close it. Um, if you see that where you put your vortex on your, on your base, if it looks like it's pretty low, you might have to build it up a little bit, level with the bottom of the tank, just so that it doesn't go lower, because obviously you haven't got as much adjustment here. So just be mindful of that. Now that we've got that, the last thing we're gonna do, I'm just gonna run around here. Put some more silicon. Now silicon usually take, takes about 24 hours to cure, so we do ask to have a minimum of 10% of water in the tank once we've installed the liner. Um, so because silicon needs to cure, you can't fill the water anywhere um, above the bottom of this fitting. Um, so that's enough water to hold it in place. So once we've done that, um, nothing works better than spit. 
So I'll just go through and clean, clean this up. Uh, the spit doesn't stick to your um, the silicon doesn't stick to your finger. If you don't use spit, you'll find out that you'll have a silicon uh, finger full of silicon. And uh, it's not nice. So I do have a rag here that I can wipe my finger because the silicon's starting to stick to it. Honestly, haven't found anything that works better than spit. Just make sure you seal right around that bolt. Now we're ready to fit our outside uh, fitting. Uh, so what we need here is obviously a coupling. Um, and I forgot to show you last time, but uh, what we need, it's called silicon grease um, or a good soapy water. Um, so long as it's really soapy would be fine. Um, this basically goes around your rubber. So when this clamps, it actually slides on the rubber and it doesn't grip it. Um, so we'll undo this one first. Now when you pull this one apart, it is um, different, so you have to put it back on the same way. When you take this off, you've got a, a male and a female, and on the other side you've got a male and a female. So it'll only fit, if you turn it around that way, it doesn't, it won't fit in. Okay? This way, fits in. So you just got to make sure you keep them the same way. We're going to get our rubber. This basically goes over the top here for now. So you want to get all the way over. So it's over that whole fitting there, okay? Like that. And we're going to grab out a little bit of grease here. You don't need a lot, but you just... It's mainly on this side here, so when that clamps together, it doesn't... Grab the rubber. fitting now with your fitting um, it doesn't matter what side it's on whether it's on the left hand side or the right hand side obviously it depends on the customer what way they want it but it shouldn't really matter but in the photo it's on this side so we'll do that then then what you want to do is just hold that there and you want to pull this rubber up over this side so it's halfway over both of the fittings. And then we're going to get this one here again, male and female. Just make sure it goes in the right way. Now be careful not to let this move too much because you don't want the rubber coming out.
Now you can use a socket for this one, if you have the right socket. Now before we tighten it too much, we can, well, it can't come out now, so we're just going to level this up. Once we've got it all level, we're going to go through and tighten it right up. Now this gap in here will close right up, so if you've got a gap there, it's not tight enough. You've got to make sure that it's hard up against there. You might have a millimetre gap, but just make sure it's tight. Okay, and that's your fitting. So now what we have, we have this part of the fitting here. Um, so from this flange, you will then have your, your your butterfly valve, and when you put your your stand in, that will go behind here. Um, so you have two bolts going through here to hold your butterfly valve in, plus your stand. So don't forget that one. Um, your stand basically will slide up and down. Uh, preferably this has got to sit on something solid so let's just stand there okay